takes months and months and months to plan our national NALC food drive, which we hold every year on the second Saturday of May. It is, after all, the largest single-day food drive in the country, having collected to date 1.2 billion pounds of food in its 21 years. This past May, letter carriers across the United States collected more than 74.4 million pounds of food, which was the second highest total to date. But after Hurricane Sandy struck New York City in the fall of 2012, which threatened all the food supplies that were there, the need didn't allow much time for further planning. And so letter carriers in the Albany District in upstate New York held a food drive not months after the fact, but just two weeks later on Saturday, November 10th. After letter carriers quickly organized the food drive in cooperation with Albany Postal District managers, they collected enough food to fill 13 postal tractor trailers with donations for the people of the New York City metropolitan area. Not bad for two weeks' notice. Using the same media contacts and the partnerships that they rely on for the annual food drive each May, letter carriers and the Albany district managers got the word out to the public and organized the logistics for collecting and for transporting the food. And it turned out that the hard part was getting the food down to New York City, then getting it unloaded, processed by food banks, because of course they had been overwhelmed by Hurricane Sandy. The solution? The 13 postal trucks full of food were used to replenish food banks on the outskirts of New York, food banks that had sent their own relief supplies into the city. So our judges noted how everyone stepped up and stood out in the face of disaster and that through it all, the mail still got delivered. And they realized that there are a lot of heroes involved in this effort. So on behalf of all the letter carriers that participated, the judges named the five largest branches in the Albany District as co-winners of the 2013 Branch Service Award. And I would like to introduce them from Albany Branch 29, Jay Jackson. From, from Syracuse Branch 134, Jim Lestumbo. From Bingham Branch 333, Jeff Potter, who's also accompanied by his Vice President, Dan Bankhead. From Northeastern New York Branch 358, President Bill Cook. And from Utica Branch 375, Mark Fahey. Would you guys come up, please? Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, the uh, senior branch president of the Albany District, and I think that's for my longevity of service, not my age. Uh, we really appreciate the recognition that the judges have provided for our members and the postal employees who uh, provided the service to Metro New York and New Jersey. We uh, are very close to that region. Uh, ourselves, we have friends and, and relatives who live in the area, 
and it, it, it's a, been a very hard time for us to live through another devastation to that region of Metro New York, New Jersey within the relatively short period of time since 9-11. Many of our co-workers were devastated by 9-11 and their families, not the least of which are the rank and file uh, in New York and, and up to and including our then National President Vincent Brado. To have those same families impacted again including a special neighborhood of multi-generational first responders who lost everything, the least of which that we could do is provide them some food in their time of need. Thank you. I'm Jay Jackson with Branch 29 Albany. I want to thank you all for coming and honoring the heroes up here. Um, I'd also like to take a minute and, and tell you the branches I represent because there's only a small few. It wasn't letter carriers from just Albany, it was from Ravina, Cooksaki, Delmar, Latham, East Greenbush, Ravina, and Rensselaer. I'd also like to acknowledge Ed Phelan who put uh, a lot of effort into it. He was part of the management team. Rural carriers collected the food. I know we have some rural people out here and appreciate their efforts. Also the mail handlers chipped in and the clerks chipped in and the motor vehicle guys that drove it down to the, to the city and to the food bank. So thanks to all of them and thank you all for coming. One more. Uh, Jim Lestumble, Branch 134 Syracuse. Uh, we're humbled and honored uh, to be here, to be recognized. We didn't do that for any recognition. Uh, we did it because that's what we do. We do that with our heroes here. We, we, uh, we go out of our way every day to, to help people, and uh, that's just part of what the letter carriers do. Again, I want to thank Eddie, too, because uh, he uh, was our district manager at the time, and uh, they helped us get that uh, out to the media. And, uh, and the one thing that we did, we did this on a Saturday, and uh, we wouldn't have been able to collect as much as we did had we done it on any other day, so thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Okay, again, I guess I'll take the senior congressman first from District 20 again, Congressman Paul Tonko. Thank you. Thank you uh, to President Fred and all of the officers, the uh, board of directors, and uh, certainly the uh, business agents, national agents across the country. Thank you for the family you are as letter carriers of this great country. And uh, to our Postmaster General Pat, and to President Emeritus Bill, um, and all of those uh, individuals who are part of this network of delivering and connecting and providing a quality service, I say thank you. Um, the uh, outstanding work done by the Albany District branches of 29, 134, 333, 358, and 375 is to be commended. And I'm proud to represent a good portion of those who are here being honored today, and by the way, congratulations to all of the heroes that will be acknowledged this uh, afternoon. Um, as was stated by our AFL-CIO Vice President, newly elected uh, Tafari, um, workers bring the strength to this country, and they need to be respected. And I stand here today to tell you how much I respect the work that all of you do. Uh, certainly, it's a stressful job. It's one that demands great, great bit of your time, your energy, and your know-how. It also requires you to fight the forces of Mother Nature. And it also requires you to put up at times with failure, like that of a congressionally imposed crisis, to have you spin up your retirement funds into 75 years. A congressionally imposed crisis that needs to be fixed. And I stand with everyone in this room to say I will fight my darndest to make certain that we turn that around so there is more stability, predictability, and strength economically for this great network of letter carriers across the country. I stand with you. You're a great force. I um, also believe... I also believe that you're a great connector in our communities, as was made very obvious by the uh, first presentation. Uh, that uh, was given to the gentleman from uh, Cleveland. Um, great work, Jason. And uh, the story that was told uh, 
reminds all of us that there is this interconnectedness that is oftentimes displayed in grand fashion by letter carriers. I often refer to you as the first neighborhood watch in the country. You're there making certain quality of life is, is addressed, that dignity is addressed, that you're there for those you serve, and you bear that role of public servant in grand fashion, and as we've seen here today, with awesome humility. So that's something of which we can be tremendously proud. I will continue to fight for those issues that are so important to you. Uh, forgive me for saying this, a six-day delivery. I think it's absolutely important. As we, as we move forward, let's take our time in this post-recession. Let's see the strength percolating to the top of how things are changing out there. There are some curves that are sweeping upward, and we need to incorporate that into our thinking and again, to make certain that this retirement spin-up that is so unnecessarily fair, unfair to all of you gets turned around and fixed. You know, you talked about our credibility, our favorability ranking at, was it 10%? I think you were being generous. Um, <laughs> I want to meet the 10%, um, but um, comparing it to your 80 plus percent favorability, there's work to be done on the Hill in this town. And when I watch the unnecessary shutdown of government that could have been resolved by a simple, straightforward activity that says yes to keeping the lights on, the doors open, and says yes to, to America paying her bills, we could be out of this dilemma. So let's go forward with common sense, let's go forward with a sense of integrity and accountability that allows us as a nation to show the strength that the Postal Service, the letter carriers, have always shown us. God bless you. To all of the folks standing behind me, I want to congratulate them personally to Jim and to uh, Bill and to uh, Mark and to Jay and Jeff. Thank you so much for all the outstanding work that you do. Please take the message back as branch presidents that I am extremely flattered by all of your members. Please congratulate them for me. It's an honor to stand with all of you. I will tell you this secret. When I first announced for Congress in 2008, the uh, National Association of Letter Carriers knew I was doing that job before I did. So I always thank them for being my first supporters. Thank you so much. Thank you, Congressman. You're an 83 percenter in our book. You know, just, <laughs> okay. Uh, we appreciate all your support. You're a great friend. Okay, uh, at this time I'd like to bring up Congressman Chris Gibson from District 19 of New York. Thank you. Well, first of all, to Fred and to Pat, I, I not only thank you for your leadership, your strong leadership, but also for your teamwork, how well you work together. And, you know, at a time of challenge, it's not only a privilege to be with you here today, it's an inspiration. It's an inspiration, you know, for these accounts, these riveting accounts, these selfless accounts, and our letter carriers, they represent all that's good in our country. Dependable, competent, integrious. This is why you enjoy the support of the American people. And Paul and I, we can speak from the vantage point of three quarters of a million people each, that that trust in you is well placed. And you know, I will tell you that uh, we were talking at lunch. As a veteran myself, you know, I appreciate how well you take care of veterans. And, and that you inspire there are uh, parents of current servicemen and women. In fact, uh, one of the gentlemen I was with, sitting with here, uh, his son just came home from Afghanistan yesterday, and we're thankful for that, that he came home in one piece. We thank him for his service. Yes, indeed. <laughs> you know, and part of the reason why you're held in such high regard is not only that dependability, that competence, that's integrity, but it's because of the, the virtue in that you are your brother and your sister's keeper, that you look out for each other. You do this every day on the job, but you go above and beyond the duty. And this is what we're here about today, that you're all heroes, and we're just taking a moment here to recognize as representative of the entire letter carriers this exceptional ethic. And you know, our area has been dev devastated by storms. We've had Irene and Lee in upstate New York, hurricanes Irene and Lee, and then Sandy. And so, you know, what Bill was saying, uh, it rings true for all our communities, how important it is 
that in a moment of crisis and need that we're there for each other. Uh, you know, from the bottom of my heart, uh, I want to thank you for your commitment, for what you do every day for all of us, the example you set from the leadership on down. You know, thank you for that. And, and on behalf of Paul and I, we want to give a certificate of special recognition to the Albany chapter, one of the honorees today, uh, the, the Albany district, for everything that they have done. Thank you. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. The food banks that were closest to ground zero of the hurricane, they felt the impacts of the hurricane also. They lost all their food, they lost their buildings. And so in order to provide immediate relief to the families who were without home and shelter and food, the, the food banks from the outer lying areas who were not directly and adversely impacted by the hurricane started supplying food to ground zero which meant that those food banks were quickly losing all the supplies that they had in their, in their food bank reserves. Well, uh, roughly around 10 days after Sandy hit, uh, the branch presidents got together with the Postal Service to see what we could do to help those victims. And we've been pretty successful in the past with food drives. So we thought maybe we can put something together. We did it in like three days. It was unbelievably successful. With a very short notice, we collected uh, enough food to fill 13 tractor trailers. So it took an enormous effort. It was, we, we fed food to staging areas that fed food into the inner you know, core of the, uh, of the uh, hurricane uh, devastation. We have a unique job in the United States. We are at literally every home in the United States six days a week. And as a result, because of our jobs, we build personal relationships with our customers. We, we watch their kids get um, grow and you know, get married. Uh, and as a result, we bond very directly, organically with the community. And so it's not a hard reach for us to, uh, be, when we're asked to help uh, do a community service effort like this, it's a natural extension of, of what we are feeling emotionally as, as employees of the Postal Service.